Mission 6, Rerouted. Welcome to London Victoria. The downline is blocked just off the Burgess Hill, so we'll need to wrong line run the final stretch to Brighton. So hey there, Jory here, and welcome back to Sky Chains World 2, welcome back to Rush Hour, and welcome back to London Commuter. We find ourselves in Victoria, we need to run a Gatic service all the way from London to Brighton. So we'll set the train up for a departure and get ourselves ready to leave very shortly. Mask key in, train to neutral. Sets the headlights to day running. Destination set to Brighton. Unlock the doors. And it's our passengers to start boarding our service. Yes, so, um, line's blocked at Burgess Hill, so we need to run wrong line down to Brighton after Burgess Hill. So we'll get that already and sorted later on. First things first, though, we need to get ourselves ready to depart. So we are at platform. 14 today here to Brighton, I believe it is. A uh, Brighton, sorry, at uh, Victoria. Uh, the departure time scheduled for 16.15, so we'll take a moment to just kind of step out and walk around. Got about a minute and a half until we need to get ourselves going. Headlights correct. Destination board should be set. Yes, it is. All looking good. Well, I've said I've been very impressed with the. Uh, the route so far. The stations are fantastic. The uh, the route's been rather good. I must say the scenarios, because this is the last of the scenarios, this is now 6 of 6. I think this is the first time we've actually been as far south to Brighton. All the missions have uh, kind of focused around the London suburban area, or Gatwick Airport heading north. I don't recall starting or going to Brighton yet, so this will be the uh, first time in these scenarios we'll be doing that. But hey, wrong row into Brighton, so never get a bit of a uh, service variety in that as well. So we'll get ourselves back towards the cab again. We'll prepare for the departure very shortly. And just keep an eye on the uh, rear train. Now, I see passengers moving towards the train. Hopefully, they will board rather than just hold back. Right, let's close our doors. Since none of them are boarding, so that's on there. That's on them now. Doors are closed. That's all fine. Now to call my door, jump in the seat, and get ready to depart. First forward. And it's supply power. It's a dual yellow aspects now, so be very careful on the departure routes. 20 miles per hour, so we'll cut the throttle now. Say so again, it's a single. There you go, green. Green aspects. We're a golf service, that's Gatwick Express. So we stop at, fair enough, uh, we stop at Gatwick Airport at 16.43, so we find ourselves about 20, how would it be, 15, 20, 27 minutes, 27 minutes to Gatwick. And then from Gatwick, we have the uh, service plan ahead of us. Uh, with a load of passengers at Hayward's Heath, so stopping at Hayward's Heath, then Hassocks, then Brighton. So we get to Brighton about 20 past 5, just before 25 past 5, so about an hour or so of driving today. And yes, we are running the uh, full length line today between. London to Brighton.
Once I did forget, AWS. Right, that's all set now. I like the voice too. So one of the safety systems that the train has is um, when you when you perform or when you activate the safety systems, it will then give you a verbal readback of the uh, systems that are active. So the three seven seven doesn't have that yet in Trains and World. I don't know how that in real life, but it does exist in the three eight seven. Potentially see some of that kind of transfer across the three seven seven point in the near future because I'd love to hear that. At some point, I've seen kind of the uh, physics of 166 read them as well, because I've driven a couple of scenarios on this. Uh, well, I've driven a, driven a couple. Of, I've driven a couple of timetables, sorry, in the uh, 166 on the Brighton Manor, so that's the Gatwick to Rygate service changing ends. Still a lovely train, but the physics, the acceleration, just feels a bit off nowadays. I mean, it's a testament to kind of the new routes, new trains, how they feel. In terms of physics, they're very, very good these days. But some of the old trains do need a bit of a, a bit of a rework. AWS. Dual yellow aspects, so we'll keep the train below 60. Single yellow down to 30. That's dual yellow again, so I believe this is what's happened is we've caught up with the train in front of us. I'm hoping that, for example, when we get as far as Clapham Junction or as far as. Uh, yeah, definitely not going to Battersea. So it'll be Clapham Junction. We'll try and overstate stuff in front of us from there. Single yellow down to 30. And yeah, you can actually see the red aspects coming up in front of us anyway, so... I'm gonna guess... Bring our train to a halt. In fact, you can just about see the train in front of us... Um, I believe it is that one moving. Yeah, because that train stationary is on different platforms, so hopefully we'll be clapping. While we do make our overtake. Not so spinning to the left there. It's the uh the UK's busy station for routes, Clapham. It's the most train movements per hour. So like thirty six, thirty eight. Showing every minute and 10 seconds ish. Right, up to 30 again, single yellow aspects. Because once we get as far as Norbury, I believe it is. Uh, Norbury, yeah, it is not. Is it Norbury? Yes, it is Norbury. <laughs> when we get there, we'll be split onto the slow line, fast line. And so during that split, is when we're expecting to see the trains. Uh, Well, see us out against the train at least, and uh, go by from there. So, passing through Clam Junction. Back to dual yellow again, so we can quite comfortably coast at 60 now. Alright, increased throttle. Let's get going. <clears throat> I keep saying throttle, it's not throttle, it's mass controller. I need to get that uh, terminology back to my mind. It's a mass controller, it's, electri it's electricity, not uh, gas throttle. 
you're breaking your throttles, or you're breaking your powers on the same handle. I still call it a throttle, but it's not a throttle. So, green aspects, age of us is cleared. We are good to go. Six miles per hour. Cut the power. And let's now coast for a little bit. So far, it's been a good run, and like I said, different scenarios. Bar of them being based around London, they have been they have been a lot of fun. Quite enjoyed the uh, stopping service on the fast line scenario when the downline was blocks. Was it was it quarry line blocks or that, that? I think there was a second scenario we did when we started off at uh, Purley. That was a rather good one. I mean, fair enough. I don't mind these high-speed express scenarios, but at least with stopping trains, there's a bit more in the back of your mind to keep thinking about. In regards to where you do need to stop and where you need to start uh, applying brakes and whatnot. And so, actually, this timetable, kind of when we get when we get towards, uh, so we get to get to the airport's express, and then we have two stops after Gatwick before Brighton, so this is kind of more in tune to a normal regular gas service in that you don't go express all the way, rather you have to stop a few stations on the route. Because really how Gatwick works, it's, it's an express train, but only when you're kind of going from Gatwick towards London. Hayes after Brighton, it stops at the main stations, it's an express service, doesn't stop at every single station on the way, so you left Preston Park, Thames it will stop there, Southern will stop there, uh, guess it will not. But essentially, it's an express service that will include some of the major stops on the way. So even London side, they'll stop at East Croydon sometimes, they'll stop at uh, Clam Junction sometimes. It all depends on which service you get, which uh, solving passenger trains will take. Graphically, the Unreal Engine. I mean, you've just got to look at the scenery for this route, apart from the camera, which bumps to platforms all the time. <laughs> if you ever see the camera go on the ground, that's because it bumps into a platform, and that's where it gets to be confused. Instead of going up, as it is in every other scenario, it goes down, because that's kind of the least resistance route. Um, yeah, coming to the. So if we go back out again, it'll be fixed again. Going to the Unreal Engine was by far the superior choice for this platform. It looks spectacular. And the way Dovetail works on the physics of this sim, it's so much better now than it was on its release. Got 17 miles to Gatwick. I'm already down to 60, so another mile and a half to we need to lay after anyway, so a bit more power and a bit more speed going. 
Just stop us losing too much. It's an uphill incline, and the majority of the first half of the route will be uphill. And therefore, kind of bouncing around throttle position one. I see, I see throttle again. Uh, controller position one. Just keep it steady on the way up. We should make use of the quarry lines. That is still in order. It's just out of... Uh, was it Hellwood Seas? No, Badger's Hill. It's just out of Badger's Hill that we've got uh, to make ourselves on the wrong line. Right, now we can set down to 60. Right, down to 45. East Front Station now coming up. It's taken about 14 minutes past the East Croydon, so we are making pretty good time as it stands. AWS, dual yellow change of points, I think it is. Nope, just dual yellow, up to green. So the surface in front of us, we're not changing tracks. Just need to maintain what we're currently doing at the moment. It's down to 14 at the end of the platform, so we won't put any more power in. Also created points up to 60 because that puts us actually in front of a stopping service. Uh, no, it doesn't. Sorry. Oh, yes, it does. Um, this track here. So, puts us in front of a stopping service. You're going as far as Seaford. Oh, you need Seaford service, are you? Um, yes, yeah, puts us in front of that service. And essentially, what it means is that we can now run express. Stop at Gatwick, while well, that train stops at uh, several stations between here and, well, here in Seaford. So that's going to stop at South Croydon. Uh, I don't know the calling pattern of that train, I must admit. But um, yeah, basically, we're a faster train. And therefore, we can take time in front of them because they're always going to be behind us. And they're not going to catch up anytime soon. South Croydon. I mean, a real beauty of the National Rail System is if and when they eventually start introducing moving block segments. So that's what they use on automatic trains and on the underground, in that instead of having a signal block, essentially a signal block is a stretch of track, however long it's depending on the speed, but a stretch of track that enables on standard use for a single train per section. So every time you pass a signal, it's a block, so now it's a different block. Then we enter a different block, a different block, so on, so on, so on, so on, to get to our destination. The colour of the signal depends on what colour the, um, well, depends where the train's position is. So if there's a train two blocks in front of us, then we get two yellow signals. If there's a train one block in front of us, then we get one yellow signal. If there's a train 
in node blocks ahead of us, so it's immediately in front of us, then it's a red signal because you can't proceed. And so until that train clears a block, then the signal cannot progress. And so that's how block systems uh, signals work in every use case. But essentially what a uh, moving signal block is, is you have a block based on the distance, a certain distance behind the train. So for example, say an underground train, and then you'll have maybe 50 meters behind it, there's like a buffer zone. And that is essentially the end of the moving block. And so the signal block will always be 50 meters behind the train. Gosh, you got a bit close to the uh, yellow line there. Um, 50 meters behind the train, moving alongside with it. And then behind that 50 meters will be another 50 meters, and then behind that another 50 meters. And depending on how many blocks you are towards that train in front, determines your uh, aspect of signal. But the signal moves with the train. So essentially, your trains will always be 50 meters apart with one another. It will never change, it will never move. Down to 60. And so generally, if you've got two aspects, you slow down to 60 miles per hour. If you've got single yellow aspect, you go down to 30 miles per hour. If you see a red, you stop. Um, so yeah, the train will move with one another, and that block will always change. So your trains will always be 50 odd meters apart. Never closer, can be further, so it all just kind of balances out around that. Bit of a delayed uh, AWS response there. So that was Julio again, so we'll co coast at 60. And so in this case, every single block on the Bryson main line is about 0.6 miles apart, just over half a mile apart. So of course, two signal blocks, dual yellow, single yellow, stop. Gives you about just under a mile and a half to stop your train if you do get too close. That signal just went to green, so we can now accelerate. I mean, you could drive these routes without the hard, in most cases, without any problems. I'm not super confident that I'd be able to slow down, speed up, and stop for all the stations on time. But if you use your route knowledge to help you. It's not impossible. So you can see the signal again just changed there from yellow to green. Essentially the train in front of us is travelling at a similar pace, but with enough spacing. So once again, the signal yellow is now yellow in front, dual yellow aspect. Once you approach it, presume that train in front is still doing the same speed, they're going to be approaching Gatwick in a couple of miles, so you need to be wary of that. Okay, it's just a case of watching the colours. If we pass through at yellow, we slow down. If we pass through at green, we carry on. Right, line C continues at 90 miles per hour. Nothing for us to change there. So yeah, we are maintaining good speeds, good clearance between train in front of us. We'll hold now the well, we'll cut up power now because we're getting a bit too speed on the downhill bank. But we're maintaining appropriate distance and speeds with the train in front. And so we are getting good clearance with the service. Eventually we need to slow down again. So once we end the quarry line to go back to the main Brighton main line, we will need to slow down for that. But also, train in front 
we'll need to lay down as well. So this is where we may need to start thinking about breaking again. All comes down to what colour this aspect is at the moment of passing. But also anticipation. So I'm anticipating train in front of us will need to lay down shortly for the uh, junction to the main line. And therefore we will also need to kind of slow down behind them at the same pace. Still green. But it was a lot closer to changing where our position was compared to earlier. See, in that case, uh, plenty of distance to change from yellow to green. We can see the change. But it wasn't quite as close as it was uh, earlier on. I like that. Squeak. <laughs> Must admit, a better window on that than the uh, sleeper car, which is a Great Western. I managed to get my window up for a little bit. But it looks like it did crease part of the, uh, the old blind, which is slightly annoying. Right, down to 80 miles per hour. Back to Bryson Main. Five miles to get to the airport. We'll hold it to 80. We won't, quite back. we won't get back to 90 just yet. Essentially. Because it's still yellow aspects and the AWS went off last time. It did change before we proceeded, but... Ooh, that... <laughs> that was virtually on the moment. You can see there, we're passing... There's a little... If you can see it, essentially, every time the AWS goes off, is you'll, there's a little magnet on track. That magnet's linked to the signal. I'll show you to when we get to the next signal. But essentially, depending on what colour aspects they go. So there's a signal coming up now, it's yellow. And there's a magnet on the floor... Not that one, sorry. It's little white magnets. There you go, that's... We pass it, set the ABS off, reset it. The seal's green now, and so next time we pass over the magnet with a green aspect, increase throttle again, um, it'll clear the ADS. So you see, there's a little flower there, ADS flower, and that's just telling us that the last signal we passed, it alerted us, and therefore it's like a reminder that we've just had to uh, go through the ADS again. Do buzz again. Play that. Dual yellow, down to 60. Single yellow now, so we need to reduce our speed down to 30 miles per hour. And back up to 60 again, dual yellow, and green, line's clear. And so the next signal is green. And when we pass the magnet, it'll wipe on track. Get a bing. And the LWS flower clears.
Joy Yellow. Back down to 60. At this point, with a mile and a half to go to uh, Gatwick, we are going to just slow down now. For the approach into the uh, train station, where we're going to stop. Single yellow, down to 30. Platform 5 will be entering. You can just see there, that train there, in the middle, the red one, that's the train that we were behind the last couple of single blocks. So I don't know if they're going to terminate here, if we're going to have to wait behind them. Actually, not even that train. I think it might actually be the, gap, the uh, southern on the left-hand side, sorry. Because that's headlights heading towards London. We'll have a, we'll have a quick look at it once we get ourselves to the platform. We're on time, a few seconds within it. It's not a problem. Doors unlocked. They now departed, so if I want to have a look at your destination, you are travelling. Come on, train. Uh, Eastbourne. So we'll be seeing you as far as Hayward's Heath, and then we'll go different separate lines. They just departed. So have actually have a look at the Gatwick Airport scenery. If we can just about spot it. Not really. You can see the runway and the airport grounds. See a few jet bridges and terminals and a A310, I think that is. Ish. It's a very blocky model. That is something. <laughs> I'm not quite sure the engines are that far out of the wing. You never know. Maybe it should be some more efficient design that I've never heard of before. Right, close the doors, let's get ready to the parts. This is train sim, not flight sim. <laughs> Alright, next station, Hayward's Heath. So again, single yellow aspect signals you'd part, so we need to reduce, or at least keep our speed at 30 for the initial um, route outs. So once again, with the, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at 45 then. Single yellow should be at 30, 45, just to get things moving a bit. But yeah, it's, 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 it's a mix. We're just watching out for the traffic basically in front. Although I think that's dual yellow now, so... Okay, fair enough. Whoops. I <laughs> moved the uh, reverse back, isn't um, Up to 40 then. Up to 60, sorry, dual yellow. And like before, we're going to just head up to 60 and just... Coast, 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 coast. For the 10 miles it is to Hayward's Heath. These routes can be uh, quite demanding on a driver uh, mentally. Because with, with the train, it's it's like flying where you're an autopilot for most of your flight. You do landing and takeoff and just change red route because you have so often. Rather, you're always, always, always having to watch signals. Up to green now, actually, so we'll go up to line speed then, 90. You're always watching signals. You're always just... You're, you're always having to react to your surroundings. Right, 
your dead man's active, your AWS is active, you're driving train manually. So I don't know, could I could I do mainline train driving in real life? Now I do narrow gauge railways in real life, that's not too difficult. It's three stations <laughs> and a mile and a half a track. Your journey time's about 20 minutes, but could I do three hours of concentration and train driving? That probably on my limits, but you never know. So I work in the railways, I've got a lot of progression ahead of me. I know enough to kind of get trains moving, that's for sure. Then again, I don't, I don't really know the basics. There's a lot about these trains that I don't know in terms of how they operate and how they run. And certainly for failure to come into play. A lot in that, which I'd have no idea what to do as well, so... I don't know. It'd be one to... Maybe consider in the future. See where it, we'll see where it goes, see where it takes me. Sure yellow, down to 60 again. Close to 60, leaves it at that, so throttle, uh, sorry, mask, mask controller, mask controller position one, leave it to coast, and yeah, that's about it really. We're looking at six minutes, six miles. If we're averaging 60, we'll get there relatively on time. And of course, if the signals do clear up, go back to green all the way, helps me in regards to actually being able to just go at a high line speed anyway. Green will coast up to about 75, won't do the full 90. In fact, I'll have to transfer to 80 anyway in a short bit, so 80 it is. In terms of our position, we are now about two thirds of the way there. We are making pretty good progress. So it's also about quarter past we arrive at uh, Brighton. Yeah, 17 past, so about 27 minutes from our current position. Of course, once the see for train front of us clears the line, that makes my life a lot easier in that I'm no longer behind traffic, and therefore can just continue to use coast, uh, continue to use line speed the rest of the way to the journey. Four miles to go. Leaving the station with very few services. Welcome to Balcombe. I know about home. This is a station actually, I actually want to visit one day. This seems rather. This seems like a nice little area about home. It's near the viaduct, and. Oh, yeah, the station underneath the bridge looks rather good as well. So 
So we're very shortly coming up to the House Valley Viaducts. That'll be just in front of us now. Let's see if we try and get ourselves a line side view of us to come by over it. That should be around the corner now. There it is. The most elegant viaduct in Britain, as it's known. Yeah, apart from they've even got the arches out at the bottom there. No, this is a very accurate uh, rendition, this. Fair play dovetail. Essentially, so you get your standard kind of viaduct uh, design with your boxes at the end for people to stand on the wrong side if traffic's passing by. Um, the actual arch themselves, it's got like a secondary arch in the uh, each leg it has. So it's, it's, there's a couple of different style, styles, uh, style designs to it, which does it rather good. Better go to Balcombe. I'll uh, have a look at it up close. It's worth a day trip. Definitely worth the day trip. Right, here we see for mile and a half. Talking about slowing down now, dual yellow, so definitely talking about slowing down. At the very least, dirty. Here we go, down to 30. We'll do 50. <laughs> no, we'll do 30. Station's coming up, just around the corner, and I'm also going to a red signal. Last thing I want to do, start slowly coasting past that. You know, the Seaford train should now be clear of the line. We'll double check the map from the station at Howard Seaford, but I'm fairly sure the train now be cleared of the line, and we'll be good to go for the rest of our journey. You'll probably just see it. Uh, just went past the, uh, well, just went through the tunnel there. Oh no, that's that's it on the left. Is that the Seaford service? We'll double check when we're stationary. Yeah, we're the Brighton service. That's departing now, the door's closing. It'll merge back onto our line, but I believe it then takes a different track down. I'll double check that in two seconds. I'm fairly sure that's the Seaford service. Um, hmm, right, so... Yeah. Because I know that there's two branches. You've got this branch here, which is the um, East Coast way. You've got the West Coast Way out here, which actually has a station included. Worth a look. But yeah, you've got East Coast Way, which is also a route on Trenton World. And then you have the uh, North Route, which takes you via uh, this track down to Lewis. So, we're behind it for another mile, and then it clears the line for us. Perfect. We depart in about 30 seconds, so we'll just we'll do a quick check of the platform, make sure everything is clear. No passengers, that's fine. Close the doors. Shame we can't use the uh, lights as like an indicator as well. When it was open and closed, there should be a yellow light there. There's not any more. Uh, the dispatcher has allocated us onto the upline to run to Brighton. We'll cross over to the other track now. Take a seat. Let's get moving. Uh, you can activate a train. We can start getting train moving without pressing down on the um, vigilance. Give it a few seconds. We'll start beeping. Maybe not. 
Should be activated. Uh, yeah, that's all activated. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> but essentially, if you don't have DSD, your driver's safety device, um, download time, you can get a few seconds without it before it does cut you off. Essentially, if you hear it, so there's two beeps. You have the AWS beep, which is a high pitch, and a DSD beep, uh, DSD, which is a slightly lower pitch. Yeah, we should be able to contact Signaler. Proceed to Signal Indicate. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so there's two different signal types. There's two different beeps. One for DSD, one for AWS. And depending on what you're listening to, what you hear, you can just adjust what you need to do. Station's hassocks. It's about ten minutes to go five miles. So that train should now clear the line for us. As you can see it's about here. So just after Are you stopping it? Is that Hale's Heath? Sorry, Hassocks. Is that Hassocks? Let me just double check the map. Um, hang on, maybe two seconds. Double check what I'm talking about. Oh, interesting, it doesn't actually appear on the uh, map, the branch down to Lewis. Uh, Wivelsfield, Burgess Hill, Hale's Heath, Hassocks. Um, well, last station for a large stretch. No, so that's Hassocks there, which makes, of course, that's Burgess Hill, because that's where the uh, diversion is, isn't it? So, will the other service stop at Burgess Hill? The answer is yes. They stop, we don't. So, we need to slow down to 30 now. Train to a halt. Tad bit faster that racing, I might. Hmm, bit naughty days in the emergency brake, but if we're gonna stop, gonna stop. <laughs> Within two yards. <laughs> uh, my braking's not perfect. Well, I think it's dual yellow now. I'd have to physically get out the train to just double check. Single yellow, sorry. Yeah, you just poke your head out and have a look. Okay, well, it's a single yellow now, so we'll get back moving again. Let's reset that, sorry. There we go, now good to go. I'm sure the controller at Brighton would have had an alert train. Okay, do we have a head code? I don't think we do, no, we don't. Um, yeah, but we get a head, we get a warning saying one, vic uh, sorry, one golf, one, three, whatever we are. Um, I'm actually brake active. We'll be getting called from signal very shortly. Hello there. Why is your brake active? Uh, you know, about to go through red signal. But we stopped in time. With about two yards. Thumbs up. <laughs> it's naughty of the drivers to use emergency brake. You shouldn't be doing that, guys. You shouldn't be doing that. There you go. You cleared the line now. We'll be good to go in no time. Oh, 
Welcome to... I'm sure this is Badger's Hill. Don't even say welcome to on this sign. It's just blank. Uh, fairly sure this is Badger's Hill. Hopefully get a platform sign very shortly, just to confirm. Wivelsfield. I am wrong. Okay. Badger's Hill's a bit further south. That will be Badger's Hill there. Let's have a northbound, so we'll allow them to pass first, and then we'll continue. I can grab that map as well at the same time. And there, it's trying to go too fast for it. Alright, green signal. Off we go. Don't go too fast, going through a set of points. 20 miles per hour, we're doing about 20 now, that's perfect. Let's retake our seats. Let's carry on. Now clear to our line to be the 75, so increase throttle and let's get going. Too close to the camera to the train. Right, two and a half miles to Hassocks. Three and a half minutes to get there. This is Burgess Hill. There we go. Right. Now I know where we are. Burgess Hill. Then Hassocks. Then... Wivelsfield. Preston Park. Brighton. Fairly sure. Alright, let's find some braking. So I'll slow down into hassocks. Now, are we looking at signals on the left hand side? I think we are still. <laughs> yeah, so we're driving the wrong rail, but we are still following our correct signals on the left hand side because. There are no backward facing signals on this set of track, on this set of lines, so very much also coordinating with the signaler in this case, just to make sure that we're not doing anything incorrect. Platform hassocks now visible. Nice and early, he's got plenty of time to slow the train down at the end of the platform there. 
you know, we are seeing we get on departure. My guess we uh, corrected onto the right rail very shortly. We'll double check that very. We'll, we'll double check that on the map when we stop. Was released. Let's have a look. Um, so we continue wrong rail. That train there is probably stranded then. If it's, unless you get into the side. And, no, you can't because you're on the wrong track. Okay, well, there's a train on the other track there, apparently. Um, yeah, you got the tunnel into Brighton. Continue down to... No, it's the wrong rail all the way down to end of the line. And there's the Brighton sidings. There's Preston Park. And continue down to Brighton. Gas Express service and platform right now, so they're got both of them to leave first before we can continue. So there'll be a few some more delays, but apart from that, we'll be all right. Doors closed. Nine minutes, six miles, Brighton, seventeen, seventeen. So there's that stranded service. Ah, that's the train that's causing the blockage. Working on the line. Sorry, should pass the uh, should have done the horn there for it. So if that's the train blocking the line, that makes sense. Okay, well, I love a little bit of detail there, Dovetail. Fair play, fair play. I'm sure the headlights are running. Oh uh, no, because we're on the um. If, we, if you said night are running, it should brighten up the right hand side a bit. Yeah, it's just because we're not against the left-hand wall there, so we're not going to see the lights light up. Again, train lights only use as markers, they're not actually used as headlights. If, you need to, if you're going to use them headlights, you need to have them like... You have to have the beams powerful like a good mile ahead of you. They only exist to show you signposts, and that's about it really. Allow trains to spot you if you're ever heading towards them. White means forward, red means back. Alright, so we're now out of the Clayton Tunnel. It's like our green spot is breaking there. The Clayton Tunnel, site of a rather nasty accident several years ago, 1861, I believe it was. Essentially, there was a train in the tunnel at the time stationary, and the train went into the back of it. As a result, that's what led to the block si signaling system that we use to this day, because it used to be an old signal phone system, like a telegraph message system.
enjoy your aspects down to 60 again. All right, so just our line speed down to 14. Momentarily passing through Preston Park. And at this point now, all we're doing is slowing train down and preparing for our stop at Brighton. Only about a mile and a half ahead of us now, so we're definitely getting close to our destination. There's Preston Park. Trying to right there, waiting for us to pass through before he can depart heading northbound, because again, only single line active right now. That, I can tell you, in reality, if <laughs> that's the case, all the lines are blocked it would certainly bottleneck a lot of the uh, Brighton Main Line. Especially such a large portion of it from uh, Burgess Hill to Preston Park. Single line on that, you're going to very, very heavily reduce service numbers. Combined with the every 10 minute Thamesing service, yeah, good luck. <laughs> You'd be cancelling every other train. Alright, so slowly and steady. Just keep the limits. Yeah, this is a bit of a route that we're all we're all welcome to, we're all used to. Single yellow aspects, okay. Get ready to stop before the station, interesting. Uh, my guess, we are waiting for that Gatex service to actually clear the platform, aren't we? That we saw on the uh, on the diagrams earlier. So we'll slow the train down even further. You can see the red aspects just over there. But then there's the uh, the Brighton Viaducts, London. Uh, what do you call it? London Road Station, just at the end of the viaducts. There's Gatex now, just departing. We clear to yellow signal. Platform four, we are entry points. Bit of a bumpy old entry into the station, I must admit. Mix of uh, power cuts and drops as well, the third row cutting out. But, we are here. We are once again in Brighton. That's a station that we've well explored with the old um, East Coastway route. I can imagine, for the most part, it's the same model, same basis. There's your exit point there on the corner. Yeah, we've, we've seen the station before. Sure, headlights not working. There we go. They were off apparently. Fair enough. Uh, doors unlocked. Let's end our run. I'm sure, we had headlights active. I must have uh, triggered something by accident. 
Posse on me accidentally knocked a reverser. That might have been what happened. We knocked a reverser to neutral and... Okay, fair enough. That's probably what killed that then. Um, oh, let's train up and clear it, I guess. So, that comes off. Reverse it to off. Doors are open, passages to board this mark. Headlights are automatically set to tail lights, hence probably why I had that issue. And that's it. That's me. Now done for the day. Again, I like the uh, sound of the barriers there. Passengers beat their way through. Oh, they've even got the old X's and arrows at the top of the gate line that a lot of them terminals now have. Oh, that. <laughs> it's a small detail, but I really do like that. And there you have it. it. Took an hour and five minutes. Not bad in terms of speed, coasting, and all that throughout the journey today. I can't complain. That was a very uh, good run overall. Um, level 91 on the profile, level 8 on the line commuter, level 6 on the 387, 50 miles driven, almost exactly, 59 yards walked, stopping at each station, not too bad, best stop would have been, here was Heath, 0.887, although Brighton, exactly 2 yards off, not bad as well. And that brings us to the end of London Commuter. Um, what can you say, I really, really enjoyed this pack. Uh, London's Victoria... Again, uh, see, it goes via Brygate. Shame we didn't get London Bridge, but maybe when they get that as a future. But overall, really, really, really enjoying these uh, routes and scenarios. And um, yeah, we'll definitely come back to us more in the future. But what can I say? Again, a massive thank you to Stuff Games for providing me a copy of uh, London Commuter to enjoy. Hope you enjoyed the videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Do subscribe if you haven't done already. Thank you very much for watching and taking part. And I'll see you all again soon for some more Train Sim action. Thanks guys, it's been a blast, have a good one, bye bye.